Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are. Bless the Lord for such a beautiful day and we believe there is nothing that will not respond or bow down before him. And remember he is in you. Now I pray for you that in the name of Jesus Christ, everything will bow down before you because God is in you. He rules, He reigns, and He walks in you. And for this reason, you will succeed and win. You are His child, the beloved child, the beloved Son of God, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We bless our Father, my, my, for His kindness and goodness, His mercy endures forever. I've been learning and seeing how he did this. It is a fact. You see, you cannot believe into something that you have not heard, or you can't know something that you did not learn. We are presenting this gospel so that you may be able to see it clearly and believing it or becoming one with it or understanding what happened will help you to walk in the light of it. That is the reason, that is the purpose. You should be able to see it before you walk in the light of it. The fullness of the experience of what God, Jesus, God has done in Christ Jesus, it is possible to be experienced by a person who has seen it. I'm not talking about using your physical eyes, but the internal eyes should be able to perceive this. We will see it in scriptures whereby this, the prophets are talking about that they will look but they will not see it why because it's not enough to just look you have to see it from inside from inside you have to perceive it you have to understand it the bible talks about the eyes of your understanding the eyes of your inner man that is very very important when you are able to see it when you are able to perceive it you will be blessed by this truth truth will be an experience of power for you you understand why the bible says the truth is power in other words uh, you shall know the truth when the bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free it means that it has power it has the power to set you free so if it has power to set you free and you have come to know it you will experience the power of freedom freedom does not just come freedom appears is an experience becomes real when truth has been illumined has illuminated your life today we have another opportunity to step make another step further in learning and growing in growing is you know growing is very cru crucial very important you cannot stay a babe you cannot stay in the state of childishness forever and you think you are you're gonna be happy you're gonna take advantage of all that is there for you growth is necessary growth is necessary and you will grow when you keep on feeding your soul your soul has to be fed consistently continually many people suffer a lot of things that I don't know maybe the reason why they're suffering that is because they are babes for ages they are babes they stay children and they are kids. They, they keep on seeing the same things, keep on experiencing the same stuff. And they don't see, you know, that there is such a thing as growth or you can move from one level to another. If you're not moving, if you're not, then probably you're not growing. You see, when you are growing, you go through different experiences of different stages uh, of growth. You experience this as you grow and you can tell that you've grown up. You grown up and, and you grew up. And it's important then to understand that likewise, we should be growing in the spirit. And the way we grow in the spirit is growing in the faculties of our souls. The faculties of our souls are the mind, you know, the understanding, the soul. The whole soul is, uh, you know, the mo most uh, common faculties that are known. Is the mind, thoughts, uh, uh, feelings and, 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 and also your decision, your, your will. 
decision making part which is the will so you find you are growing in those areas as you grow in those areas you you see things differently haven't you realized or seen that the things you used to 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 know in a certain way in a given way when you grew up you 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 changed your perception changed about them the, your perception changed about them you didn't know much you didn't know better the way you know today for example or what you know today in few years to come you re, you will be surprised that your perception has changed because you grow you grow so and when you grow i'm saying you discover that you grow you you know that you're growing Praise the Lord forevermore. Praise the Lord forevermore. So growth is very necessary. It's, in, it's important. Maturity is important. Why? Because you can reign with him when you mature. When you're a child or a kid, you, you cannot reign. Of course, you don't know much. You see, ignorance and childishness goes hand in hand. And you saw maturity and knowledge also goes hand in hand. You see why you need to know now? Because if you get to know, you'll grow. If you don't know, you'll not grow. And that is what we are suffering, many of us. You see in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, we read the, the last part that sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. We are seeing Jesus Christ after doing all the work, sitting down on, on the right hand of the majesty on high. And we are discovering that this is only possible when the work you had to do is finished. You cannot just sit. You cannot sit. So if he's not standing and he's just sitting, it tells you something. And like I said, it is not about sitting on the chair because you're talking about sitting on the throne. Sitting on the throne does not mean you're sitting on the chair. The king might be standing. The king might be moving. The king might be, um, you know, not seated in that chair, in that, in that very chair, I mean the throne. But when you talk about the king is sitting, it, it means he's, he's reigning, he's ruling, he's, he's in power, you know. He's in the throne, he's on the throne, he's on the throne. He can stand up from that very place where he sits, but it doesn't mean when he stands up that he's not on the throne. Being on the throne means you are reigning, you are ruling. Currently, you are in power. You see, that is what we mean. That is what we see in uh, in that word. So, in the in the version uh, called MSG says, the son took his honored place high in the heavens, right alongside God. <laughs> Glory says, the son took his honored place high in the heavens, right alongside God. So he's there in the honored place, in the place of honor. Jesus is seated in the place of honor. You know what that means? It means that he's seated there with the church. He reigns with the church. It means that where Jesus Christ is seated is where the church is seated. Remember, we are the body and he's the head, the members of his body. So if we are the members of his body, where is where we are? You see, there is no greatest place, there is no highest place, there is no highest level than this one. This is the highest level possible. You can pray about, you know, the highest level, but there is nothing, nothing that you're gonna gonna get more that is greater than uh, than this level where Jesus Christ sat and again like i'm saying the good news is that you are also seated there remember you're not seated on the right side and god and, and christ is seated on the left side don't entertain this idea of separation remember where christ is is where you are you are in him where he is is where you are so you are where he is if he is now seated above all these things if he's seated on the right side of the father which means in the in the in the place of authority a place of, a power, of power. It means you are sitting in the place of authority and power. You are high. You are powerful in Christ Jesus. You have power. You know, you're a child of God. You're a son of God. That is what you have. That's who you are again. In the version called Way, says, He achieved the cleansing of the, of the world seed and then sat down on a throne at the right hand of the majesty divine in the high heavens in the high heavens so the highest 
heaven. The, in the high heavens means that is the highest level possible. That is the highest level one can get to. And only Jesus is there. It means he rules over all things. But that also includes you, remember? You are also part of what is going on. You are also part of what is going on. He's doing this not for himself. He's doing it for you. And he's doing it much with you. This is the key then to discover, to understand that he's doing it with you, together with you. This is why you come, where, where you come in. This is why you come in. And this is the part of the gospel that many people are not aware of. If they discover that Jesus has done it, they are happy. But they don't realize he did it with us. And this part where he did it with us is the most crucial part because that's where salvation is possible on your behalf, or on, on your side rather. It is possible on your side because you are also included in what is going on. You see, if you are in a, in a boat, if, you, if, if somebody picks you up and takes you with him in the boat and you are sailing or going somewhere, you see, why, when he takes you there, the experience he will have in the, in the, in the sea or in the waters, it will be your, same, your experience as well. You see, if you are where he is, his experience has got to be your experience. You are where he is. You are where he is. So we are seated with him in heavenly places, of course. And that place is the highest level possible, like I'm saying. It means you are higher. It means you are reigning. It means you rule with him. Glory, glory, glory. The Barclay version says, And after he had effected the cleansing of men from their sins, he took his place at the right hand of the majesty in the highest heights of heaven. In the height of heaven. This is so important. You see, he did not finish the work and left us somewhere. And he did not finish in grave. He finished the work in glory. You see, the end of the church is in glory. The glory is the destiny of the church. The highest place possible is the calling of the church. The position of the church is up there, not down. You are called to come up hither. You are called to go high. You are not called to go below, to go down, to, to, to slope down. You are called to go up. And the good news is that you are there already. Why? Because what Jesus sees there you are. There you are. This is so beautiful. Brothers and sisters, when he forgave us, when he removed our sins, it, it did not finish. He stopped from there. He took another step forward. Oh my, my. And he gave us. So that is why he said those who have, you have justified, he glorified. After justifying us, he did not leave us there. He glorified us. He gives us glory. He gives us glory. And glory is who he is. Glory is what he possesses. Glory is his, his, his beauty, his splendor. We, ha, we have glory. We are in glory. And there are places where the Bible talks about the church being the glory, the, the woman being the glory of the man, of the man. And so the church is the glory of Christ. It means we are the glory. My, my, my. Brothers and sisters, we are reigning with him. Let us grow and learn to take our rightful place in Christ Jesus. And we should not doubt because doubt is the only issue. Since we are not convinced of that truth, we will doubt. But once we are convinced of that truth, we begin to experience everything that is there 